Okay, so in today's session, we're going to look at a critical region hypothesis test. So this is a different approach to a hypothesis test, and actually one that's probably more popular in the real world as hypothesis tests are conducted. This time round, without thinking about the observed value from the sample, assuming we don't yet have that observed value from the sample, we want to be able to state a range of values that would make us reject H0 a range of values that would give us a significant result. And we can do that through a bit of trial and improvement. Okay, let's have a look at an example case. Here, we're told that John tosses a coin eight times and it comes up heads six times. I'm actually going to ignore that six for now. I don't want to use that until the very end. I'm happy to even pretend that I didn't even know it was six. He claims the coin is biased towards heads. Significance level of 5%, we want to test his claim. And here we've been instructed to use the critical region technique, as you often will be in an exam question. So let's get started. As usual, let's define the discrete random variable. X is the number of times that heads will appear. And P is the probability of getting heads on each individual toss. And this leads to the distribution. X follows a binomial, N is eight, P is 0 0.5. So that's shorthand for the number of times that heads appears on this coin is going to follow a binomial with eight trials and a probability of success of 0 0.5. These steps should start off familiar. The null hypothesis is that P equals 0 0.5 and the alternate hypothesis P is greater than 0 0.5. From there, I know the significance level is 5%. This is going to be really important in this question earlier than it usually is. The expectation we calculate as four and that can go onto a diagram. So four is in the middle and I know I'm looking for a region over here, but I don't know what value to use here. What is going to be our critical value? We're looking for the first value where the probability that we calculate with it is smaller than the significance level. We're going to do a bit of trial and improvement. We need to find that value for ourselves. This is going to be the value that is the boundary between accepting H0 and rejecting H0. For me, as a rule of thumb, I'll try and start with the value halfway in between the expectation and the extreme. So halfway in between four and eight is six. Let's find the probability that X is greater than or equal to six. Well, that's 14.45%. This is a lot bigger than 5%. So six wouldn't give me a significant result. Let's check the next value. The probability that x is greater than or equal to seven. This time round, we get 0 0.0352. Yes, this is a significant result. This is smaller than the significance level. It's smaller than 5%. Seven gives me a probability that would have led me to reject H0. Six, I wouldn't have rejected H0, but seven, Yes, I would. And actually, all the values bigger than seven would also make me reject H0. So we found our critical value, which leads to our critical region. X is greater than or equal to seven. Now we have the critical region. I'm gonna look back to the question and see how many times we achieved heads, how many successes we had. And we had six successes. Would six lead to a significant result? Well, no, it wouldn't. Seven is the boundary and six is not inside the critical region, the rejection region. Six is in the acceptance region. It's in the safe zone. This is not a significant result. So this is how we conduct a critical region hypothesis test. We find the range of values, the region of values that would make us reject H0. And then we check whether our observed value is in that region or not. Let's formalize this. Six is less than seven, so it's not in the critical region. This is not significant. And we conclude how we would usually. There is not enough evidence to reject H0, and in context, there's not enough evidence that this coin is biased. So a couple of differences here for the critical region hypothesis test. Just be on the lookout for those, and make sure you're stating the critical region and the comparison in your working out. By default, we choose the critical region for a probability smaller than the significance level. 
but sometimes in the question you're given permission to break that rule a little bit. You might be asked to find the critical region based on the probability being the closest to the significance level. In a case where 0.051 is bigger but it's closer than 0.02. So in those questions and those cases would rather be closer than strictly less than the significance level. So just be on the lookout for that wording in the question. As I always say, one word can change the whole question. So make sure you've read carefully and see if that comes up. You will come across some of those in the exercise and in your practice and revision.